Hello, grade eights. This is Mr. Miller, and welcome to lesson 8.1 on exploring integer multiplication. So first of all, we want to look at writing repeated addition um, as a multiplication statement and then calculating the answer. So for example, positive 4 plus positive 4 is um, adding two sets of positive 4, which gives you a total result of positive 8. So just like here, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. We are adding four groups of positive 5 for a total value of positive 20. In part B, we have 1, 2, 3 of these negative 9s. So we are adding three groups of negative 9 for a total value of negative 27. If you get the idea here, you might want to pause the video and do the last couple yourself, then check your answers. But if not, just take a look. So here we have a whole bunch of negative twos that we're adding together. We have one, two, three, four, five of them. So this is adding five groups of negative two for a total value of negative 10. And the last one here, we have two groups of positive three and we are adding two groups of positive three for a total value of positive six. And that's the basic idea with multiplication. So now to look at a different representation here. We're asking what multiplication statement does each set of integer chips represent? And just so you know, the integer chips here, when you've got a photocopied handout, obviously being black and white, so you can't really work in color. Um, so it's always indicated whether they're positive or negative. In the textbook, if you have positive, you'll see them just shaded in as red, and the negative ones are blue. So there may not be a plus and minus sign on the chips. It's um, just so you know, the positive ones are red and the negative ones are blue in the textbook. Anyways, so the first example that's already worked out for us is that you've got two groups of size positive 3 that you're adding on to the table, and that gives you a total value of positive 6. So here, if we started with nothing, we're adding these three groups, and they're of size negative 2 each, then the total value is negative 6. <clears throat> Likewise, for this one, we have four groups being added on, so the positive means we're adding them onto the table. The size of each group is positive 3, you can see there's positive 3 plus signs in each one of these groups. The total value is positive 12. In part C, we are adding two groups of size positive 5 each for a total value of positive 10. And part D, you are adding only just one group of size negative 8 on, which has a value of negative 8. Now, there's an important concept when it comes to integer chips that you should know about. When you have a positive and a negative and you add them together, plus one added to negative one, this is an example of what we call a zero pair because positive one and negative one add to zero. It's kind of like having one weight with a balloon and they kind of balance each other out. So imagine there's a helium balloon pulling this up and there's a a weight pulling this down and they balance each other out. <clears throat> so that's a, a zero effect or a zero pair. You can see if we have four of these in a row then this is showing an example of multiplication by zero. So it's showing that if you have added four groups of size zero then the total value is zero. Maybe that's kind of obvious, but there we go. 
So now we want to take a look at something a little bit different. <clears throat> so what if we wanted to represent a negative times a negative as we're doing here? Well, it's kind of hard to take anything away if you're starting with nothing. How can you take away two groups of size negative three? Well, what you can do is you can start off with these six zero pairs. So there's really a total value here of zero. But from here, you can actually subtract two groups. So subtract two groups, take away two groups. That's why the arrows of size negative three each. And what happens when you remove them, see what's left over? Are these six positive chips? That's why it's positive six. So in a similar way, we're gonna take a look at these two examples and see if we can work out what they are representing. So if you count how many zero pairs there are here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We've got 12 zero pairs, but the 12 zero pairs here have no value. But what we want to do is we want to subtract three groups. So that's why you have negative three. You want to take away these three groups of size positive four each. And what happens is you end up removing these and you can see that the 12 negative chips are what remain and that's why the product is negative 12. In a similar way, part B, if we have these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, these 10 zero pairs, and which is a total value of zero. Okay, so there's nothing here. Start with nothing. And we remove 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So taking away five groups of size, negative two, what remains are the positive ones here, and that's a total value of positive 10. So now what we're going to do is we're going to look at a summary. Or in other words, what are the rules here? We took a look at a lot of, initially we were just looking at positive numbers times things. So a positive times a positive gave us a positive, a positive times a negative gave us a negative, and that was it. Then, eventually, we looked at what happens if you have a negative times a positive. Well, that's a negative product. And a negative times a negative, that gave us a positive product. So here are the rules in words. So first of all, when you multiply a positive number times a positive number, the result is a positive number or a positive product. When you multiply a positive with a negative, you get a negative product. When you do a negative times a positive, you get a negative product. And when you do a negative times a negative, you get a positive product. Now there's another way that you can phrase this that may help some people to remember. So here's another way to look at it. Two numbers with the same sign multiply to a positive product. So that's to say a positive times a positive and a negative times a negative. In both those cases, you've got two, two numbers that have the same sign. Positive times positive, negative times negative. They both result in a positive product. However, if you multiply two oppositely signed numbers, they multiply to a negative product. So a negative times a positive and a positive times a negative, in both cases, you have opposite signs, negative to positive, positive to negative, and the product will be negative in both cases. So that does it for this lesson. Hope you understood that. If you don't quite understand it, make sure to ask lots of questions in class. 
Thanks for watching and have a great day.